Hello guys, this is Dr. Asif Nawaz. Uh, after a long time, I was not present here nowadays because the examinations and the honorary training. So, the way we talked about the Immersive Part A courses um, for the continuations of after the anatomy session, we are going to start the physiology. As you know that uh, physiology is a little bit tough because it is uh, dependent on conceptual studies at all. So uh, this is the three day session. So three important parts of three lectures. So let's start it for the very beginning. So we will study these Reda notes because it is previously called the Sala note or um another another egyptian who just combined the emrcs explanation within a pdf form and which will helps you to continue the reading session of anatom physiology uh, very clearly so let's start first it is very common because first things first okay so let's start the first things so for the very beginning we will start from the jugular venous pressure and the normal indicators of anatomy as well and also the blood coagulation system and the cardiac activities then metabolism of different substances so let's start first the jugular venous pressure it is also called the pressure of venous return from the above like jugular because jugular vein ultimately drain as superior when superior vena cava that we all know because jugular vein comes to the brachiocephalic vein then ultimately it drains to the right atrium through superior vena cava so if we want to know the pressure that exerted from the right atrium or right side of the heart that will be elevated or that will show the elevated pressure in the jugular vein so if jvp or jugular venous pressure is raised there is definitely a obstruction of anywhere to the pathways like up to the lung that is pulmonary trunk or a right ventricle uh, right atrium as well as superior vena cava or brachycephalic vein and also in the and the surrounding areas like neck of the like uh, apex of the lung or these areas mediastinal areas these are also causes increased jugular venous pressure so jvp looks like this there are three important hikes that is a c or v and the low region is x and y descent so this is uprising and these two are low rising so what it indicates acv means arterial a to arterial a to arterial contractions c that is ventricular contraction atrial contraction ventricular contraction and the v that is atrial venous filling you know the contraction needs less time than the ventricle but it needs a great time because it is the filling time okay so atrial venous filling and the y x and y descent means x descent atrium relaxes and tricuspid valves moves down that is it needs time to descend so atrial contraction then uh, ventricular contraction but it needs atrial relaxation atrial relaxation 
and so tricuspid valve moves down that means at my blood goes to the atrial to ventricle and the y descent means ventricular filling okay ventricular filling so this is the fundamental things you know much better okay I, we, uh, I, I regarded it that you know much better but this is the fundamental things now there are some abnormalities in the JVP so this is basic but there are changes there there are some changes what kind of changes and what it indicates which is very much to needed for emergency party a that is a wave atrial contraction we know where the tricuspid stenosis pulmonary stenosis pulmonary hypertension so it indicates there are some obstruction further the JVP so that is right atrium right ventricle and pulmonary artery and as well as in the lung so that is pulmonary hypertension pulmonary stenosis uh, tricuspid stenosis means there are some obstruction and it is it will be absent if there is atrial fibrillation so that is all you need to that is all you need to uh, memorize or you need to understand this is a concept okay so sometimes you can see there is a change in a wave it look like cannon so what it indicates atrial contraction it is a closed tricuspid valve if tricuspid valve is closed and tremendous pressure arises in the right atrium in that case it looks huge pressure so a wave will be cannon like okay now the c waves that is complete heart block if there is a atrioventricular block in that case um, complete heart block ventricular ectopics complete heart blocks then nodal rhyme single chamber ventricular pacing in that case it will causes So block can an a wave can be occurs in the hard block hmm? then the c wave that is here the c wave the closure of tricuspid valve not normally visible but closure of tricuspid valve means the c wave and the v wave there is a changes that the atrium against a close tricuspid valve the giant v wave tricuspid regurgitations okay if V wave is huge, in that case, there is a tricuspid regurgitation. So there is a valvular heart defect. And the, if the V wave, the atrium against the closed tricuspid valve, so that means the valve is stenosed or valve is not working properly. In that case, valve is not opening. In that case, this, there is a tremendous pressure arises within the atrium. In that case, V wave will be enlarged as well as a wave also okay so a and v wave will be enlarged and kind of like if there is a stenosis or heart block etc now the x descent and y descent x descent fall in atrial pressure during ventricular system and the y is opening of the tricuspid valve why but that means tricuspid valve opened then atrial blood goes to the ventricle okay now uh, absent away atrial fibrillation i already mentioned and the large a wave that is right ventricular hypertrophy or any obstructions cannon complete heart block v wave huge that is tricuspid regurgitation slow y descend and state y descent slow y descend mean tricuspid stenosis right atrial myxoma and the step y descend right ventricular failure constrictive pericarditis and tricuspid regurgitation okay now the normal ecg normal ecg um, not needed but not so important for the last exam but you need to know that the p wave means atrial isenodal contraction 
PR interval means the time between onset of atrial depolarization and onset of ventricular depolarization. These are the interval. QRS means ventricular depolarization. T wave ventricular repolarization. Okay. That is you need to know here. And the P wave isoelectric period that is atrial contraction. If I say what it indicates atrial contraction or atrial depolarization. Now the QT interval that is that represents the both ventricular depolarization and the repolarizations. Okay. This is the concept that we all know that T, uh, P, T, what indicates there are some diff uh, difference or disease condition here, pathological U waves, some uh, T wave depression or absence of P wave, the kind of uh, things sometimes asked in the exam, but I think you will figure it out later on. Now the acute phase protein. So there are uh, some proteins which will increase in the acute painful conditions or in inflammatory conditions like CRP like these things ferritin, fibrinogen, alpha 1, endotrypsin, ceruloplasmin, uh, amyloid A, haptoglobin uh, uh, complement system this is uh, during the acute phase response the liver decreases the production of other proteins sometimes if are negative phase proteins okay and like the examples albumin transferrin retin retinol binding proteins cortisol binding proteins so these are the acute phase protein that is uh, indicates there are some inflammation or uh, there are some uh, acute response to the body due to inflammation now the levels of CRP are commonly measured in the acute unwell patient. Okay, CRP protein synthesizes in the liver and binds to phosphocholine bacterial cell. All those are the underlying apoptosis. Okay, apoptosis is the things uh, that is the end point of increased amount of acute fresh protein. So 150. Uh, however, the level that is if uh, there is a measurement. 150 at 48 hours post operatively are suggestive of involving the complications. It must not go beyond 150. And the tumor necrosis factor is another pro inflammatory cytokines with the multiple roles in the immune system. Like activates the macrophage and neutrophils, ACTX, or co stimulator of T cell activations, and the key mediators of gram negative septicemia as well and the similar properties of L1 and the anti-tumor effect that is phospholipase activation. The TNF alpha binds to both P55 and 75 receptors. It can induce apoptosis. Uh, the epithelial effects increase the expression of selectins, production of platelative activating factor 1. TNF promotes the proliferation of fibroblast and the protease and collagenase. Uh, the receptors that bind uh, points in serum. Okay. So, where TNF alpha is raised, like a pyrexia, increased face proteins and disordered metabolism, followed by cachexia. We all know that uh, there are some catabolic and anabolic phase of our body. After any massive surgery or a massive stressful condition like sepsis or shock or this kind of gram negative bacteria induced in that case um, a prolonged period of cachexia or um, catabolic phases occurs in that case the cachexia or a lack of uh, appetite causes massive damages to the uh, entire metabolic system that's why tnf alpha is came out and, uh, and and causes pyrexia. So TNF is important at the pathogenesis of rheumatic arthritis. Okay, like TNF blockers in Fliximab are now licensed treatment for severe rheumatoid disease. 
it is autoimmune disease like um, so tumor necrosis factor must be blocked by some biological agent like infliximab now the acid based disorder one of the important things is MRSS both EMQ sessions okay metabolic acidosis this is the uh, four things metabolic acidosis metabolic alkalosis respiratory acidosis and alkalosis what it means so first let me see so this is the acidotic period and the alkalosis reason so before 7.4 this is <clears throat> acidosis and after the 7.4 this is alkalosis so this is the most common surgical acid phase disorder that is metabolic acidosis most common but the actual things is different because in case of acute painful condition metabolic acidosis can be occurs but there is some another disaster condition occurs in the anesthetic field or during anesthesia there is a arrest of respiration or respiratory depression or there are some drug effects in that case respiratory acidosis is another important things that we know very clearly in the surgical practice especially in anesthesia so the loss of base from the bowel in the di diarrhea that is if diarrhea occurs there is many bicarbonate is washed out by the nasogastric uh, like vomiting or aspirations in that case metabolic acidosis occurs like diabetic ketoacidosis if uncontrolled diabetes mellitus and the sub there is an ion gap more uh, positive ions and the more negative ions their difference like 8 to 16 the normal value so increase and decrease anion gap wears like some gastrointestinal bacteria carb bicarbonate loss like a fissula like diarrhea like urethrosigmoidoscopy and the renal tubular cells the renal tubular acidosis okay what happened okay so renal tubular acidosis and on gap normal okay and some there are some gap, gastrointestinal loss like diarrhea or these kind of things that a hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis occurs if if there is a lot of sodium chloride into like more than two more than um, two to three liters okay and the, uh, the, the acetazolamide that is diabetics, Addison's disease, like ammonium chloride injections, okay, as well. The, so, where they raised an anger that is lactate, shock, hypoxia, diabetic ketoacidosis acidosis, like alcohol, urate, like renal failure, and the acid based poisoning, salicylate, methanol, etc. Metabolic acidosis secondary to high lactate may be subdivided into two, two that is lactate acidosis type a and then lactic acidosis type b that kind of things okay now the metabolic alkalosis is usually caused by the raise in plasma bicarbonate levels and the rise of bicarbonate level above 24 millimole power will typically result in renal excretion of excess bicarbonate and the vomiting is aspiration, diuretics, hypokalemia, primary hyperaldosteronism, Cushing syndrome, congenital adrenal hyperplasia. So, in that case, a lot of bicarbonate will typically rise into the body. And the cause of excess loss of hydrogen ion or gain bicarbonate this is the mechanism so these are the conditions where it occurs like uh, pyloric stenosis nasogastric suction alkalosis occurs okay metabolic alkalosis so respiratory acidosis uh, oh and other things activation of renin angiotensis 2 is a key factors okay aldosterone causes reabsorption of uh, sodium in exchange of hydrogen and distal convoluted tubule in that case more hydrogen will be secreted and excreted 
and the sodium and chloride loss activation of RS system and raised aldosterone levels in sheep cells ECF neutrality and the respiratory acidosis means the rise in carbon dioxide level as a result of alveolar ventilations renal compensation compensated respiratory acidosis occurs this is another things like compensated hyperventilation is the things or uh, because respiratory is arrested in that case uh, kidney has to take the responsibility to correct the metabolic problems like COPD like benzodiazepine opiate overdose life threatening asthma pulmonary edema etc so respiratory alkalosis hyperventilation resulting excess loss of carbon dioxide and the psychogenic anxiety leading to hyperventilations hypoxia leading to pulmonary embolism high altitude and early salicylate poisoning and stroke subarachnoid encephalitis pregnancy salicylate overdose leads to mixed respiratory alkalosis and the metabolic acidosis okay that is all you, you need to know because if you want to you want to be best in acid base balance you must study the questions like mrcs part equation from the emrcs as well as um, the medibody special beta things like a medibody so you must go through that website to practice question beta analysis okay there are some question about um, acid base balance so um, the more you will practice the more you will be efficient with this okay so uh, what is the this is the normal value you must memorize the normal value also okay uh, so partial pressure of carbon dioxide oxygen what it indicates you must know that metabolic alkalosis will have high bicarbonate and high base axis positive and the metabolic acidosis in the base axis is negative base axis mainly bicarbonate levels indicate bicarbonate the amount of bicarbonate present in the blood if it more than positive if it is less then if acidosis then bicarbonate is less in that case base axis is always negative now the fluid compartment so there are some extracellular intracellular compartment you all know because it is very very much basic from the mbbs level what the amount of different fluids and uh, 60 40 20 rules that you know that is 60 percent total body weight water uh, 40 percent total body weight in uh, excess fluid and 20 percent excess fluid so the more these two things is very important intercellular 60 65 percent extracellular is 35 to 40 percent now the csf cerebrospinal fluid is also transcellular fluid as a as a component of transcellular fluid so csf fills the space between the arachnoid matter and the pia matter in between so 150 ml is the little amount of uh, level but it's very important approximate 500 ml producing the ependymal cells in the choroid plexus now the 70 percent blood vessels 30 percent so 500 ml is produced by the epidemial ependymal cells of the ventricles okay they like lateral ventricles forward ventricles which is lined by the ependymal cells so the pathways lateral ventricle through the foramen of Monroe goes through the third ventricles and the third to fourth by the aqueduct of Sylvius and the, then the fourth ventricles foramen Magenta and Lusaka to the uh, subarachnoid space and the reabsorbing the subarachnoid granulation into the superior sagittal sinus and the amount of glucose is 50 to 80 and protein is 15 to 40 milligram per deciliter so there will be no blood if blood occurs then it is definitely from the 
Lumbar puncture needle through the vertebral venous plexus. It must form the vertebral venous plexus. Some will say it may be epidural artery, but epidural artery will be continuous and is far um, lateral than um, medial one. So we will go through the actual medially for lumbar puncture. In that case, venous uh, vas vessel from the venous vertebral venous plexus can be injured but not the epidural artery okay you must uh, 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 be sure about that now the cerebral perfusion pressure cpp bola hoy the cerebral perfusion pressure is defined as being the net pressure gradient causing blood flow to the brain so how we measure that is for uh, cpp you need to know mean arterial pressure and intracerebral pressure if intracerebral pressure that is icp uh, and the mean arterial pressure its difference is called the cerebral perfusion pressure so diastolic one third of systolic minus diastolic pressure it is needed for measuring mfp that is mean arterial pressure then if we will minimize the intracranial pressure then it is called the cerebral perfusion pressure yes it is very important for part a there are some questions of uh, me, where they wanted to know the marking points that uh, what is the amount of cpp okay so there will be math little math you must perform now the coagulation cascade that is bleeding related disease or the physiology so you need to know the uh, very clearly uh, very very clearly because it is very important there are some two pathways of intrinsic and extrinsic system that is one is intrinsic system which is involved in the if i say uh, into the left side and the extrinsic part pathway come from the right side okay so what are the components or factors are usually um, usually related with the intrinsic factor uh, it, it already here that is collagen if there is a collagen damage or um, like like high molecular weight kininogen precalicrine factor 12 then factor 11 factor 9 so these are very important with related with intrinsic pathway actually and x and tissue damage factor 7 tissue factors like uh, factor 9 so everybody intrinsic and extrinsic factor will collaboratively activate uh, factor 9 it is like y shape okay so in two, two pathway there's extrinsic and intrinsic pathway turn to activate factor 9 that will activate also factor 10 and then it will give activate the coagulation system ultimately 9 will uh, activate 10 to conversion prothrombin to thrombin and ultimately thrombin hydrolysis fibrinogen peptide bonds to fibrin 8 like here you can see here y shape so come contact activation intrinsic pathway then ultimately comes through this way and this way so here the trauma comes through this prothrombin thrombin then fibrinogen cross-linking okay so just uh, just look at these pictures first damage internal damages these are the external damage like a trauma trauma will activate factor 7 that by the tissue factor and it will ultimately factor 10 and here the factor 13 to 11 11 12 to 11 then ultimately it will activate factor 10 and also factor 8 uh, is also helps in here the hydrate calcium phosphate 
these are the things factor b then activate protein c protein s uh, thrombomodulin okay so here are all the things that will helps to activate thrombin so now here you can see some the marking points how you know the where is the defect if someone tells you that a patient came with bleeding disorders or the increasing prothrombin time or APTT or a PT raised or, or, or not raised in that case how will you know because it's intrinsic increase APTT factor 8 9 10, 11 12 extrinsic that is increase PT and factor 7 a common pathways is increase APTT and PT and factor 2 5 10 to 7 9 10 that is prothrombin time warfarin related things it is came to january 2013 uh, which factor will be affected by the warfarin therapy that is vitamin k dependent what clotting factors factor 2 7 9 10 okay vitamin k dependent and the common pathway factor 2 5 10 and the extrinsic is 7 and the intrinsic is 8 9 11 12 now in case of dic bleeding more platelet less okay thrombin more epitd more prothrombin more so you must remember very clearly here this block so if you have read the notes then you have to go for study and memorize this or uh, you have to revise it more uh, more rapidly or again and again to note it very clearly because it is very important for the exam and the heparin prevents activation of 2 9 10 11 and activates the 2 7 9 10 and factor 2 1 2 5 8 11 and the factor 1 2 5 7 9 10 11 okay and the hypercoagulability and the thrombin deficiency inactivate thrombin factor 12 9 10 this kind of things and the uh, autosomal dominant fashions it is if someone into thrombin 3 deficiency so heparin will be useless because heparin acts with antithrombin 3 so if a patient has antithrombin 3 defect then she or he or she has to take the anticoagulant lifelong okay that very much you must remember that very much clearly because during your uh, uh, question solving you will see this kind of sh problem sometimes you will, you have to face protein c and uh, deep liver protein s produced from the liver and then cells helps the factor okay five percent somebody which are not not more rapid but rare resistance or integral effect activating fact protein c and the antiphospholipid syndrome yes very important pregnancy involvement is very common antiphospholipid and the multi organ disease also APTT usually prolong and the iron 3 point three two three and four uh, antibody may be elevated following surgery drugs and malignancy now the warfarin as we know the 27910 and protein C oral integral inhibit reduction of potassium uh, vitamin k sorry for potassium and the um, some other factors like that may potentiate warfarin p450 inhibits amiodarone and the ciprofloxacin drugs which displace that is ns8 and the inhibit platelet function also now the heparin heparin that is here thrombin factor 7 9 10 11 12 so formation of complex antithrombin and activated here the antithrombin is necessary for heparin working so antithrombin 3 deficiency causes lifelong anticoagulant therapy like warfarin now the advantages of low molecular weight heparin so so we will use low molecular weight heparin gradually to the fit person those who are fit we will use as a prophylaxis for long-term vascular surgery 
or we can take as a profile axis after long bone surgery pelvic surgery or a femoral fracture or multiple fracture trauma we can use and some patients those who are in hyperlipidemia or increased cholesterol level in that case we can use it now the uh, better viability lower risk of bleeding longer half-life and the little effect of aptt heparin in this thrombocytopenia 5 to 14 days in surgical patient that may need a rapid return to the theater administration of unfractionated heparin is preferred as a low molecular weight heparin have a longer duration of action are harder to reverse so unfractionated heparin has a longer time so uh, it, it there is no reverse so reverse from the unfractionated heparin is not so easy because it is low molecular weight longer duration action to excrete from the body in that case we will use low molecular weight heparin now the so and uh, the bleeding initial response of bleeding even if of relatively small volume is generalized planktonic vasoconstriction mediated by activation of sympathetic nervous system so sympathetic nervous system is used to increase the blood volume by increasing blood pressure by splanchnic vasoconstriction it will help to vasoconstriction peripherally as well as increase heart rate and force of contraction to the heart and peripheral vasoconstriction this process is usually sufficient to maintain renal perfusion and cardiac output if the blood of volume of blood is lost is small okay it is used in the small amount of blood loss but if the blood loss is more in that case renin angiotensin system is activated like if we say how how much amount the amount is must be lost if you active if you want to activate renal angiotensin at least 500 ml okay like rapid two bag bloods rapid uh, two bag like 3500 ml but it's lost in that case for compensation renin angiotensin activating system is activated and the source of bleeding this physiological means will restore circulating volume so so initially a barrel shift or, or sympathetic uh, stimulation will activate or, uh, or or activate it in the minor injury but if 500 ml or more in that case renal angiotensin activating system is must so it is sometimes asked in the exam like it's ba okay physiological examinations so thank you this is all about today's lecture so now uh, from the second class we will discuss about the cardiac physiology along in some metabolic abnormalities like hypokalemia hyponatremia or some electrolyte related disorders as well as the cardiac function related physiology so thank you very much that is all about today's class and keep watching my videos and later on there are other videos like belly labs uh, 2080 editions it is newly came out so i will try to further lecture on the belly lab is from 28 but there are some additional changes that occurs in different aspects of bellies and labs in 27th editions but that is not the factor so what are the important factors is x that is full chapter it added some new chapters or some new uh, steps of division of uh, 27th edition or some added addition of the 27th edition will become sooner or later so keep watching my videos and give likes and comments and subscribe thank you very much peace Okay, bye-bye. See you there.